Welcome to the Range Podcast. I'm Ricky Bruley, and with me is Jake Hollywood Iverson. Join us at the Archery Range, where we'll tell stories from the hunt, discuss technical bow shooting tactics and gear, and pick the brains of some of the most successful people to ever shoot a bow. Whether you're about to shoot that X for the win or send an arrow at a trophy buck, this podcast is for you. The Range Podcast is brought to you by Vapor Trail Archery, makers of the best bowstrings money can buy, originators of limb-driven arrow rest technology, and innovators of stokerized stabilizer systems. Welcome to The Range, everybody. I am Ricky Bruley, and I am so happy to be back in the studio with you all. I moved from the backcountry studio. We've got a bit of a new look here. We're constantly learning and evolving for your viewing pleasure, so if we change something and you don't like it, please let us know. Thank you for joining us all today. Uh, you can also find the video version of this podcast on the Vapor Trail YouTube channel. So please head on over, subscribe, give this episode a like, and make sure you hit that bell uh, so you can get notified of all things archery. Welcome to this episode known as Covert Operation. On the show today, we have a couple of longtime Vapor Trail customers, one of which would officially become Vapor Trail and Stokerized Pro Staffer. You've most likely seen our content shared on our IG stories. These two spend many days afield. In fact, they just recently took a trip to one of the holy grails of the Whitetail Woods, Buffalo County, Wisconsin. Justin and Ashley Covert, thanks for jumping on this Unprop 2 episode. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us. Yeah, absolutely. No problem. Yeah, we had a we had kind of a last minute cancellation and we've got episodes scheduled out for like the next couple of months, but um Usually I'm not really very prepared for trying to dive into a quick episode on the day of. So appreciate you guys uh, volunteering and figure you all would make a good fit. So as a one man band here, it is my responsibility to manage our social media channels as well as the promotional staff. And over the course of 2022, um, Ashley, you had uh, been tagging, tagging us in a lot of content on your Instagram page. And I started to take notice I reached out to see if you had any interest in being on staff and not only did you accept, but you also informed me that your husband, Justin was a longtime fan. So it was like a win-win situation. So that was perfect. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about all of that, how that all kind of went down as far as like your experience with, uh, you know, getting onto the social media scene with hunting and, and all that kind of stuff. So I just kind of started following a bunch of people that were uh, posting and it looked like a fun way to just grow as a person, um, not necessarily over the view counts and everything, but I saw people posting positive messages and whatnot, and I thought it was a really fun way to not only share my journey, but just kind of help people along the way. And mm. that's that's where I got started, and then it just kind of turned into the nature photos and the photos of the bow outside and, and catching like sunsets and stuff and trying to find mm. The prettiest parts of nature so that even if somebody doesn't hunt they're still drawn to the pictures and they want to look at them yeah for sure and it just it kept growing from there and it's been it's been a really fun really fun journey and um it's been about i think it's only been like five years since i've been doing it and he's the one that got me into it mm -hmm. um i actually didn't eat meat before we got married okay so it's been, <laughs> yeah, it's been really fun and it's been really interesting and it's, it's helped me grow all together as a person and mm -hmm. I've enjoyed that a lot. Um, there's been a lot of moments that I've been proud of myself and as an adult, I don't feel like people are proud of themselves enough mm -hmm. and it's made me push boundaries and do things I never thought I would do and it's just grown into so much more than a social media experience or, um, becoming a popular person amongst people it's it's become me growing into a different person and blossoming into something else and it's been fun it's been it's been a really fun time and having my husband on for the ride and then our little one joins us on all of our adventures for the most part too it's been a really mm -hmm. fun family experience as well yeah no that's great and hats off to you too for you know being an adult onset hunter i i, I can't imagine you know i I grew up in it, you know, I was brought up uh, as a hunter and fisherman and all those kinds of things. And so it was really kind of easy to, you know, transition into 
you know, getting into bow hunting and doing, um, you know, just diving more and deeper into it. And so to get started from the get go, um, can be tough. Luckily you had Justin there to, you know, kind of walk yeah. you through the process. So that that's really cool. And now you're able to pass it on to your boy and, uh, make it a family affair. So that's great. I can't wait until my daughter's old enough to start taking her out hunting. I'm excited for that. We're waiting for it. To... It's been a lot of fun watching you on your journey. And then, um, especially like my more recently, uh, seeing some of the things that you, you know, some of the hunts that you and Justin have been going on as well, but I'd like to, uh, start with you, Justin, tell the listeners a little bit about yourself and your journey to becoming a bow hunter. Uh, well, I've lived in West Virginia pretty much my whole life, and uh, I don't really remember a time that I haven't hunted. It's, I don't remember any time in my life where I wasn't in the woods and chasing my dad. And I was lucky enough to have a dad that he was a carpenter, and he would get off work, take me hunting every evening. Mm-hmm. And I would be seven years old walking with a bow, missing five or six deer in the evening. There was a lot of deer in West Virginia at that time, and I chased a bunch of them. Mm-hmm. Didn't hit very many, but I shot a lot. But I, I was lucky. Spent a lot of time in the woods as a kid, and it's just stuck with me. I've uh, always been pretty well addicted to hunting, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. Met her, and then my hunting strategy had to change somewhat with mm-hmm. adult onset hunter coming on board, as everyone wants to call her. But she's she's done really, really well. I'm getting her elevated this year, so I think that'll help some. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've done a lot of ground hunting the past few years, which was a big change for me, but. We were still finding deer, so I got a thumb on a pretty good year. Fantastic. And what about you, Ashley? Talk a little bit about, you know, the the decision that you made, and and you know what what was what was really the driving force behind wanting to hunt, and especially like to go uh, right into bow hunting as well. So I had always been curious about bow hunting, and um, when I lived back home in Washington. Uh, I shot a bow at some, some, I don't know, like outdoor store or something like that. And I Mm. snapped the absolute snot out of my arm. (laughs) And from then on, I never touched a bow again. And I was like, it's really cool, but that hurt. And I just, I never had any interest. And I knew I needed to eat meat. And when I ended up pregnant with our son, I started eating cheeseburgers like crazy, (laughs) but red meat does something to my stomach and it just, it doesn't Mm. agree very well. Mm -hmm. And I ate deer meat and I didn't have any issues. So when I started hunting, I legitimately started hunting out of food source because it doesn't mess up my stomach. Mm -hmm. And, um, the first year I wanted to start bow hunting, but Justin was like, well, we'll shoot with a gun first and we'll see how you feel about it. Mm -hmm. So I got my first one with a gun. And then afterwards, I was like, okay, I want a bow now. And then I practiced and practiced and practiced. And then the following year, I went out. And that was the year that I got the most amount of does. I think Mm -hmm. I ended up with like five that year. And I think two of them were bow. And it was, it was really fun. And it makes it a little bit more of a challenge. So Mm -hmm. it's, it's, I mean, obviously, it's a lot easier to shoot with a gun. So I liked the bow because it was a lot more personal and like up close. And when I pick the does, I pick the ones that don't have babies. They're not producing offspring anymore. They're not, Mm -hmm. they just blow. They're just old biddies. And so (laughs) I I hunt the old biddies and then I take them out because they're just eating food and there's not really much need for them at that Mm -hmm. point. They're not Mm -hmm. producing anything. So I have fun hunting does <laughs> and yeah. Justin says, once I shoot a buck, I'll probably be after bucks. But so far I get the same excitement with does as I do with mm-hmm. bucks. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I'm but... challenging anybody to pick a doe. Huh? <laughs> it's just as challenging as most yeah. buck if you pick a particular one. But it's, it's yeah. fun for me. And at the end of the day, I know I'm putting food on the table. So that's, that's where I'm at with it. And that's my main drive for hunting is because I know that it agrees with my body and it's nutrients that I can put into my body. Yeah, that's fantastic. And also, you know, just interesting as well. I've got a, you know, I have a friend that, uh, he has Lyme's disease. And so with that, he, he kind of runs into the same thing where he, you know, other meats just don't agree with them, but you know, wild game, especially venison, 
does agree with them. And so mm-hmm. it's, it's one of the primary sources of food for him. So I, I just thought that that was interesting and just like you guys. So, you know, my wife, she's not a hunter. She never has been, although she really has like some sort of strange distaste for birds. So she would not <laughs> be afraid to kill a turkey. Like she, she's gone out turkey hunting with me a few times. Um, although she loves owls and like birds of prey, you know, that kind of thing. Cause they're very majestic right. and all that. And, and she paints a lot of owls in her artwork as well. That's so pretty. Um, it's beautiful. Yeah. She's really talented. Um, she does good work. the, you know, I'm trying to kind of, cause we don't eat the kids and, and her, they don't eat a lot of meat either. So right. but we're, we're kind of starting to transition into this, uh, you know, just trying to become more self-sufficient in the world. Uh, be less uh, dependent upon, you know, groceries and all that kind of stuff. We're trying yeah. to be farmers now. And and so she's starting to get a, a greater understanding for the necessity of hunting and all those kinds of things, whether she'll do that or not. I, I don't know. Again, turkey hunting, she'll, she'll blast one right in the face without hesitating. That's awesome. you know? <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, for deer, she's, she's not really um, so much into that, but so yeah, it's really cool what you guys are doing and appreciate you guys shooting our products. Justin, so when was when did you first uh, hear about us or when um, what got you to start using our products or vapor truck I've, products, I should say? I've been shooting the Pro V style rest for and strings for roughly probably 20 years, I would say. I'm not exactly mm. sure if it dates back quite a bit. Uh, the local boat tech that I see quite a bit, he was a big vapor trail fan. Mm. With Swinger, there were certain rests you couldn't tune, and he just pushed it, and that's what I got as a, a young 20-year-old. And mm-hmm. uh, I've been shooting them ever since, recommended them. I've always had great luck. I've never had a failure with one, and that's what I had her shooting. And uh, they just always worked well for me, but myself. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, no, we appreciate that. It's it, it was fun being a part of the, of the whole team back then when we developed that arrow rest. That was our... That was our second iteration of the pro and we, you know, we were just trying to, you know, accommodate the folks that wanted something that had a capture mechanism on it. And we were scratching our heads on the design and trying to take our original pro, put a cage on that and try to make it function. And we were having a really hard time making it universal. And then our previous owner one day, like had a dream and was like, I got it. I got to figure it out. I had a dream last night of how to make it work. And so that's how the pro V was born. The micro, both bucks behind me were killed with the uh, micro. Oh, right on. It wasn't the Pro V, yeah. Yeah. But I shot no, it that, for several years, and I love that rest, too. That's awesome. It's still, we still, we have a, sell a ton of those, the original Pro and the Micro Elites, and we've got a lot of dealers that they, that's their tried and true. That's what they like to use. That's what they like to um, uh, put on their customers' bows. So it's still a very, very popular rest. So that's really cool. And thank you guys for, you know, for supporting us for all these years. It was really cool when you said that Justin had been um, been a fan and been using our products for a long time and then it all kind of started you know the pieces all started to fall, kind of fall into place so uh, so you guys just recently got back from from a, a bow hunt in Buffalo County Wisconsin you know it's it's highly regarded over there you know anytime you tell somebody you're going to Buffalo County you know their eyes usually kind of light up and I've hunted out there one time too I was uh, with a writer's camp and I had the opportunity to hunt at Buffalo County's um, land too. And so tell us a little bit about how that all came about, you know, the relationship that you guys have with Gearhead and, and how that went down and then, and then go into a little bit about, you know, how the hunt went. We'll be right back. Coming this Friday, June 30th, is our brand new online arrow customizer. Build your victory or eastern arrows with multiple vein options, configurations, and custom arrow wraps in a large array of designs and colors. Spine indexing and expedited build options are also available so you can get back out in the field and flinging in style. Check out the Vapor Trail Arrow Customizer at www.vaportrailarchery.com forward slash arrow customizer. So um, in January, I was picked to be Gearhead's uh, Staffer of the Year, and Skip invited not just myself, but Justin and Peanut to come to Wisconsin and hunt with them. And then 
Well, initially we were trying to go hunt Montana, but we couldn't pull tags. And then we were going to try for Wyoming and we didn't pull tags there either. And then where Wisconsin was over the counter, that's where we had ended up. Um, And Skip had known some people with some land in Buffalo County. So that's where we started out first. Um, And it was it was kind of a bust. Um, (laughs) The setups weren't the greatest for the situations and the winds that we had that day. Mm -hmm. Um, so we were there for, I think three days and I think we saw what three does. So that was about all we saw there and it was really Mm -hmm. hot. And then we ended up going towards Richland County, I think is what it was called. And, um, Brady had worked really hard and put us up on some land and whatnot. And the first day I had saw, um, a buck, it was probably about 220 yards away and he was just bedded Mm. down which was really cool because it's something i'd never seen before um he was just bedded down in some corn way out in the distance and i was trying to get his attention and it never worked and i was like okay so then um justin saw that day yeah you can talk Mm. about that one (laughs) Uh, first bobcat i've ever seen while hunting and i guess it's pretty rare for that area to actually see him they get him on trail camera they don't see him in person very often but about 4 30 evening a good sized bobcat came out and it came under the elevated blind and kind of circled me and then disappeared mm. into the corn mm. but that was a that was a really cool experience seeing them in person and it, it was hunting it was hungry and uh, everything hunting meat at that time was having trouble <laughs> yeah so a, many a lot of acorns. acorns so many acorns and that was part of the problem in buffalo county they're they're so used to hunting the food plots and stuff like that out there that when the acorns mm. hit nobody was deep enough in the woods to to see any deer even even the people we were hunting with driving around late in the evening while we were hunting they weren't seeing them in the fields Mm-mm. or anything so mm-hmm. it was just rough times acorns droppings always make it hard <laughs> so then day two i was in a tree stand and i watched a doe come through and she hung out for a bit and i think that was about all that we saw mm-hmm. on day two mm-hmm. and then day three hurt my feel bad <laughs> Um, day three, it finally ended up raining and the temperatures dropped and there was two bucks that came barreling from behind me and they Mm. came flying and I tried knocking my arrow and everything. I met at them. They didn't stop. Then coming back through, they stopped and it was behind me and it was a blind Mm. that wasn't like a window that wasn't opened Mm -hmm. and I was trying to unzip it and everything and I couldn't get it unzipped. But when I drew back... Apparently, when I was trying to knock my arrow, I bumped my arrow off the string. I wouldn't have Mm. been able to get a shot from back there anyways. So I watched Mm -hmm. him and I thought for certain he was going to circle around. So I'm sitting there drawn back waiting for him to circle around and he never circled back around. And I was like, shoot. Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) But it was it was really neat to see because where we hunt in West Virginia and stuff, um, you don't see very much. Uh, movement. Uh, mm. You see a lot of does, but as far as bucks go, there's not not a lot. Big difference mm-hmm. in West Virginia public land and Buffalo County, Wisconsin, yeah. or anywhere in Wisconsin, really. But yeah. So is the is like the buck to doe ratio pretty out of whack uh, over in the um, uh, area where you're in West Virginia? Awful yeah. in West Virginia. It's probably a in most areas. I won't say everywhere, but most areas, I would say it's a twenty to one ratio. Oh wow. Yeah, the, wow. I mean, certain areas see a lot of rutting activity, but certain areas, it's almost zero rutting activity because they just mm-hmm. don't have to. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody's, you know, most of the hunters are are looking for bucks. Nobody's really taking out any does. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and that makes it tough, too, for calling or trying to, you know, any of that kind of stuff, you know, because a buck doesn't really have to respond. He's got 20 does at his disposal that he yeah. can. Yeah. You know, so we run into that a lot here in Minnesota. There's little, there's really good pockets and stuff, especially in the, in the metro areas that can really tuck in and hide. And but yeah, the, the buck to doe ratio out here is pretty, pretty out of whack too. I think, and it may have changed now since the last time I checked, but I, I think on the, on average is about 10 to one here in the state yeah. of Minnesota. So That's feel your pain. Years ago, in West Virginia, you can take five bucks in a, in a year and then oh it's been gosh. three bucks for it's been three for several years, and then after this year, it's dropping to two a year. So oh I, that should help us some in this state coming up, but we'll see. That's yeah. finally going in a decent direction, though. Right, hopefully. right. Yeah. 
I mean, how, so personally, how do you guys feel about that? I mean, cause you know, I think it'd be great to be able to shoot two bucks in this state, but if we could do that, then we wouldn't have any. So that's, con that would be concerning for me. So I I'm, I'm good with the one buck deal, uh, you know, with, with whatever weapon, um, you choose, how, how do you feel about that? You know, coming down to potentially just well, two deer, but possibly even just one buck. Well, with me, I, I went to a lot of DNR meetings in West Virginia, and we can do a three-minute public comment. And I spent a lot of time at those meetings talking, trying to get to a one-buck limit because we were so high. But mm -hmm. I, we, with us dropping to a two, I wish we could do a two-buck, the second one having some kind of point restriction or spread limit, just so that way we could, I don't know, I guess still hunt quite a bit in this state, but still have some mm -hmm. quality deer. And yeah. I mean, there are some gigantic bucks that come out of west virginia every year i mean there's been some 200s come out of some areas and i mean there are yeah. a lot of big deer but they, they can be far a few in between in certain areas for sure yeah and i know wisconsin used to have like a, they, what they call a, an earn a buck uh deal where you had to shoot a doe first and then you had to submit mm -hmm. your doe tag in order to get your buck tag yeah we have a couple counties like that, that do the okay buck, but very few to where i mean sure. you can kill two bucks with archery alone mm -hmm. without shooting a doe at all so your Buffalo County hunt, you know, I don't want to say a bust, right? Because you got some time in the stand, uh, you know, yeah. you, have to, you have to be one with nature, right? And just sort out all your thoughts and everything in the blind in the tree stand. You guys sat separate from each other then? Yeah. Well, it was hit or miss. And uh, some nights I was running the camera for her and just okay. kind of in the blind with her. And then uh, several, I think it was two nights I was running camera. And then uh, the other four or five nights I was, we were in separate stands. Okay. Okay. But that was cool. the first time I've ever been west of Columbus, Ohio. So getting out in that mm. country was crazy for me to see. I grew up watching right. all the all the hunting films from out there and all that. So no matter what, even not seeing bucks, it was still just cool getting to hunt that area. Right. That was the first time I really hunted around corn. So. <laughs> yeah, I just saw that photo that you took too. That was really beautiful. The grass and everything, and the you know the clouds and everything. In the background it was a really nice photo. Very very pretty spot. Yeah. So when I, when I hunted out there too, it was, I, I did end up shooting a doe. I think it was on the last day and, um, you know, but it was one of those things, you know, it was a writer's camp. And so they had usually the way those things go is, you know, an outfitter has, you know, some openings either late, you know, it's never anything peak, you know, but he had some openings late season. And so we, we just went out and, and hunted and, um, but yeah, it was, it was just really cool to be out there, you know, and yeah. actually, with the way things are out have always been with vapor trail i wear a lot of hats so like during the day i, I literally brought my tw 27 inch mac with me and i was sitting there in the in the cabin working on stuff you know during the day when we weren't hunting so it was kind of yeah. wasn't really much of a vacation but either way i can say i hunted buffalo county once so yeah. <laughs> that's, that's us too. That's, that's, yeah. something else i wanted to talk to you guys about too and i know like you said uh ashley you know it's been roughly about five years since you uh, made the decision to start hunting. But I'm just curious about the dynamics of being married, having a family, um, finding time to hunt and put food on the table. Uh, as a married man and a father, I understand the difficulties of, uh, you know, I guess that can arise with that combination. Do you, do you guys have any like tips or tricks for the couples out there that are trying to make that sort of dynamic work? So we are a very simple family. Like we don't really live outside of our means. And the main expenses either go to peanut or they go to hunting for the most mm. part. <laughs> um, we grow a garden every year. So we've got like fresh vegetables and all that stuff. We can, we freeze. Um, and then when we have meat from the deer, it just kind of adds to our food supply. So mm -hmm. we basically homestead in a sense without all of the animals. We'll get there eventually. But right. yeah. um, and then the way we work is I stay home with Peanut and then Justin typically works. Um, mm -hmm. And so we take care of the garden and do that. And then we have the money for the bills and the little bit of extras that we need. Um, yeah. and then as a family dynamic, we just all do it together. Like, it's not really a chore. It's not really a hassle. Like if we go check the trail cams, Peanut's like, oh, can I go with you? And then he just mm -hmm. loves wandering through the woods. Yeah. Um, and then if 
Justin wants to go scout heavy hardcore, then he just takes off on his own and he goes and scouts for a bit and then mm-hmm. comes back with his findings or whatever it may be. And you can add yeah. to it too, babe. A lot of the hunting we do is two miles back on public. So mm-hmm. taking him with us on some of the trips right now are kind of hard. And if, uh, another year or two, he, he'll be he'll be going a mile back with us, I think. Yeah. So uh, this year we're hoping to get him in the turkey woods a little bit more. Right now he he knows he's struggling being quiet, so he uh, <laughs> he opts out a lot. Yeah, he says he don't want to go because he has to be quiet mm-hmm. right now. But he um, loves scouting. He loves getting mm-hmm. out in the woods and scouting and all that. So he loves it won't making, be long. He's only five, so yeah, he likes making scrapes. He likes all of that stuff so it's it's his favorite he likes pointing out rubs he'll get milkweed pods and he'll start spreading milkweed out (laughs) so he knows the he knows the things that we do in the woods and he's Mm -hmm. very familiar with that it's just he does not like to be quiet yet (laughs) he shoots when we shoot up at evening he's got his little cabela's bow that he's letting arrows fly out of so we we, we do a lot of it together so Mm -hmm. it's a lot of fun yeah, I mean, I, I really look forward to, you know, my daughter is a pretty feral child and um, yeah, I, I yeah. have a feeling she's going to be, uh, you know, she's really going to love it. You know, I've taken her out turkey hunting and stuff like that. And the only way that I can really make that work out is is by giving her a, a, an iPad that she so she can watch a movie while we're sitting yeah. in there, you know, but um, she just like surprisingly she'll put it down and then she'll just sit with me and then just look around. You know, and yep. if I if I move and my chair creaks or something, she gets on me about it. She's like, "Shh, quiet." <laughs> so well, she gets, sh- you know, sh- yeah, she gets it. But of course, you know, she's three, and so, uh, yeah. you know, her her uh, energy gets the best of her. So, but e- either yeah. way, I I never take her out with the expectation that you know uh, that there's going to be any sort of I guess what you might call success. You know, with right. uh, feeling something, but. Uh, ends up always being success just getting her out in the woods and having fun and she loves playing yeah. with the decoys and all that kind of stuff oh, yeah. so it's not even about um like forcing them into it it's just about like having right. them there and planting the seed the more you force mm-hmm. them the less they want if you just set them like you said you set her up with her little ipad and stuff and she chooses to take that look like it's it's just i feel like some people put so much on their kiddos when they're so young mm-hmm. because they want them to want it so bad that that's where they end up falling short. You just got to kind of let them do their own thing and let them experience yeah. it in their own way. Absolutely. Absolutely. I get our, uh, our boy Coda, he's 11 now and I've taken him hunting in the ground blind a couple of times and we've done some grouse hunting and he, he prefers the grouse hunting. He, he likes to be moving, walking, you know, looking at yeah. things. He just, he can't, he's not into sitting around and maybe someday he'll be into it and maybe he won't, you know, and that's okay. It's just, whatever, you know, whatever he wants to do, you know, just to, you know, kind of try to keep that outdoor spark alive. Cause you know, the video yeah. games and everything come along and, and those can easily be distracting. So uh, any amount of time yeah. that we can get them outside <laughs> is fantastic. So and kids miss out on small game hunting anymore. All the kids go directly into whitetail hunting and there's so much woodsmanship that's learned walking through the woods, squirrel hunting and small game hunting. And that's kind of a loss. Because there's mm-hmm. hardly anybody small game hunting anymore, mm-hmm. and that just—I I, just one thing I'm hoping to get with Peanut is him out in the woods small game hunting for a few years before he whitetail hunts very much, just to learn. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think, uh, gosh, what was it? It was—it wasn't too long ago, just a couple of months ago, or this spring, Coda actually shot a rabbit with his bow, uh, and he it was That's just awesome. excited. He was just <laughs> jazzed up, you know. And I was like, I remember those days. You did? <laughs> Yeah, I was like, you did? What? What? You know, so it was just really, really cool. And he, he was super excited. And but then at the same time, you know, he went through all those emotions, you know, where he had some sadness yeah. about it and didn't really know how to feel about it, you know. So um, but he, you know, like we'll we'll uh we'll cook up the rabbit and he'll eat it and he's like, This is good. So <laughs> that's pretty cool. But it was a big learning experience for him too. Cause it's, mm-hmm. I mean, it is a lot of emotions to go through. There's, there's mm-hmm. been times when I've shot things and I've been like, Oh, uh, I don't know how <laughs> I feel about that situation. And then like it more turns more out so fine. Happens. And, and you never know how anybody's going to feel until it happens. It's, it's the weirdest thing. Like he's warned me. He's like, mm, you might feel some like remorse or you might feel some like sadness or whatever, but you never really understand it until it happens. 
Mm-hmm. When it happens, then you're like, oh, okay, this is what they're talking about. But it's it's such a weird thing to try and explain to somebody that's never experienced it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I've cried twice. The first uh, buck I ever killed and the biggest buck I ever killed. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> That's very valid, I feel like. Yeah, I've, I, I I've teared t- up once in the woods, and that was over hitting one and I never finding it. And that oh, one still yeah. bothers me to this day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's always, that's a tough one to go through. I've, yeah. I've, yeah. That, that happened a few times. And it would have still been my biggest today. So. Oof, duh. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. tough with all the time spent <laughs> in the woods and, you know, all that. And then for that to happen, I, I, like I said, I've been there a few times. So I feel your pain, brother. Yeah. That's tough. Everybody putting an order in now, needing it in the week. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, we're, we're catching back up, but we did fall behind. We got inundated with orders just before uh, Labor Day weekend. It was like a tsunami hit us. And yeah. we, I couldn't imagine. We typically have a pretty steady flow of orders that come in and we can, we can gauge and estimate what we're going to have and how things are going to, how they're going to come through. But I think what happened is, is a few other manufacturers in the industry really got backed up. And so a lot of their, um, orders were, were coming our way. And so, yeah, we just, we got hit hard. And so now we're just getting caught back up and, um, just glad that I was able to get you guys on and take, a, take some time out of the day to, you know, chat with you guys. It's been a, been a great conversation and really appreciate you guys taking time out of your day and, and getting, getting peanut over to grandma and grandpa's there. So we <laughs> could be a part of this. Thank you for having us. Yeah, he enjoys it up there. So. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. So, well, folks, that uh, brings us to the end of this episode. Uh, Ashley, where can the listeners find you on social media? Um, on Facebook as another Ashley Outdoors. And then on Instagram, it made me do underscores because they don't do spaces, but mm-hmm. another Ashley Outdoors as well. So okay. that's, that's my two handles. And how about you, Justin, if people want to connect with you? And then about it would be a covert IG on Instagram. That would be the main one that I would use. Excellent. All right. Well, you can find us at the range podcast on Instagram and Facebook, and you can find me Ricky dot Wayne 80 on Instagram and Ricky W Brewley on Facebook. Again, please be sure to head over to our vapor trail YouTube channel. And if you like this episode, be sure to be sure to give it a like. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell so you can be up to date on all things archery. If you're listening, do me a favor, give us a rating and make sure to give us five stars. Big thanks to the coverts for joining us today last minute and good luck with the rest of your season and keep uh, the content coming. I really, really do appreciate it. And with that, we are going to pack up our bows and arrows and we're hitting the range. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Vapor Trail is now offering an exclusive discount to the Range Podcast listeners. Enter promo code TRP15, that's T-R-P-15, at checkout for 15% off VTX bowstrings and Vapor Trail and Stoke Rise branded t-shirts, hats, and other gear. Woo! Heard it. Nice shot. Oh, what in the hell went flying? I think, I think he cut the... I think he cut the tube at the...